Interactions are a fundamental principle in nature. Even our genes don't work isolated, but interact with each other in a highly complex and dynamic network. These genetic interactions are analyzed in a research project led by Professor Michael Boutros at the German Cancer Research Center in Heidelberg, in collaboration with Heidelberg University and the EMBL. Human diseases are usually based on alterations of many different genes. The scientists want to understand how they are connected. With a technique called RNA interference, they silence single and pairwise combinations of genes living in cells to see which genes work together and how their network is constructed. The logic behind the approach is simple. Let this chorus represent a genetic network. It depends on the correct interaction of all voices. Only if they act together in the right way, they produce a harmonious melody. The same is true for genes. To find out if two genes interact with one another, the scientists silence one gene and analyze the effect this has on the cells. Then they do the same for the second gene. In the next step, both genes are silenced at the same time. If they interact with each other, something unexpected will happen in the cells. <laughs> to get a better understanding of these processes, the Boutros group screens hundreds of thousands of pairwise gene combinations. Let's take a closer look. A standard multi-well plate has 384 holes and each holds a single experiment. 160 plates are processed, adding up to over 60,000 single experiments per week. An experiment of this size cannot be performed by human or by hand because it's really, really large and uh, needs to be really precise. So just as we apply robotics for plate handling, we also use automated microscopy and software-based image analysis. A robot handles the multi-well plates and loads the automated microscope. Fluorescent markers visualize the nucleus and the cell body. Around 40 different parameters are collected for each cell. That adds up to 6 terabytes of data produced every week. The microscope sends the images directly to the server room. Here they are analyzed by a software programmed to identify cell structures. This software calculates the expected effects for the cell and compares them with what the scientists actually observe. With the information, they are able to identify how genes interact with each other. In the end, our experiment will give us a very good impression of the genetic interaction network of a cell. But this is still only a snapshot, so we know that these networks are highly dynamic and might change over time. So understanding how this network behaves in context and adapts to changes will also help us hopefully understanding complex diseases. Genetic networks are as complex as a musical composition. The analyses at the German Cancer Research Center are only the beginning, and reality is far more complex. The next challenge will be to understand the dynamics of the network and its reactions to changes from in or outside the cell. There is still a lot to be discovered.